Dr. Sanjeev Upadhyay is going to introduce him. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Dharmendra Rai, the guy who gets into your mind. He is a mind map trainer, gives rise to over 2 million reference pages on Google, has over 24,000 direct connections on LinkedIn, directs in bold. And I, yes, I don't have time to read all his credentials. If you want to know more, you have to go to his website. So ladies and gentlemen, give it up to Mumbai's first mind map trainer, Dharmendra Rai. Hi, Dharmendra. Welcome to Jam with Sam. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Have a seat. <coughs> Please Dharmendra. take the mic. Yeah, okay. it's working. Don't worry. It seems to be. <laughs> recording the cameras are recording. Yeah, okay. Okay. You're online. Okay. <coughs> so Dharmendra has been, you know, putting up. How many? How many of you have seen all the uh, Masti he's been doing on my page? Yeah, a lot of people have been seeing that Masti. He and Anil. You know, they keep on Sam and um, they made like you know jam out of me over there. I'm wondering whether he's going to take my interview or I'm going to take his interview over there. So, Dharmendra, let's get straight to the meat. What do people call you? I mean, I store your name as DR because, you know, Dharmendra Rai, both Lamba I remember Shole and all that stuff. And then, you know, Basanti also comes into my thing over there. So, tell me, what do you call yourself? So, plenty of people call me plenty of names. So, Dharmendra... Like real names, huh? not those names. Yeah. Dharmendra Rai, D Rai, Dharam, Garam Dharam. <laughs> Some people call me the Steve Jobs of training because I have lots of training programs which nobody else in the world has. Some people call me the Dhirubhai Ambani of training because I've made all my partners rich and some of them are in the room. Uh, some guys call me the uh, Edison okay, of okay, training. Yeah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I, think, I think now 20 minutes will be taken by that only over there. So, okay Dharmendra, so let's get straight. What is a mind map? to people over here who don't know what's a mind map. Okay, a mind map is an alternative to normal linear notes, which is what virtually everyone does. Now, it is better than linear notes because it uses pictures and everybody just loves pictures. If I were to show you thousand pictures right now, one second per picture, and I were to come back to you after three months, and check your recall for those pictures, you'd probably average 90%. So that's how powerful pictures are. And we love pictures. So one is they're powerful, you look at a picture, you tend not to forget it. And the other is you just love look, looking at pictures. So it uses pictures, it uses color, and we all love color. I don't think anybody in this room has a black and white mobile phone. So we all love color. Do you have a black and, and white mobile phone? No, no. not at all. It's color, okay. okay. And it uses condensed information. So you can literally condense an entire book on one mind map. So plenty of people have stopped reading books, but those few people who still read books, they forget because they don't review those books. And it's very difficult to review a book because if a book is 200 pages long, how, how many times in your life are you going to review it? But if you make a mind map, first of all, you need to understand what's in that book to make a mind map. That itself increases your retention, increases your understanding of what's in that book. Second is, you can review it anytime. You can keep one page which summarizes the entire book in your bag, in any convenient way, and you can review it again and again. And that moves the data into your long-term memory. So what all can you use mind maps for? Which professions? It has infinite applications. So it's just like a laptop or an iPad. You can use it if you are a singer. You can use it if you are a chief executive of a Fortune 500 company. In fact, plenty of Fortune 500 companies the chief executives use it, Bill Gates uses it, Al Gore uses it, uh, almost all the senior executives of major Indian companies use it. Uh, a student can use it. Uh, it can be used for getting up in the morning and planning your day. You can make a diary before going to sleep. So you can do just about anything with a mind map. So this you have to use uh, the, all those colored pencils which you showed us and uh, on a paper can, or is there something which is electronic because most people I, that day went to buy a lot of colored pencil, it costed them 2,000 bucks for the whole set. Okay. So I don't want to end up buying those colored pencils. My wife will think, what's wrong with them? Is he going back to school for drawing or something? But can you do this on an iPad or on a laptop also? Yes, you can. In fact, there's free software available. So whoever is giving me his email address will get that free software. Sorry for the plug. No, you, you can plug you as can. much as you want. To. There's free electricity here, so you can plug. Okay, great. So you can do it on a software as well. At the same time, it's recommended that you first read about it or attend a seminar about it and really understand how powerful it is. 
then start doing it by hand first, okay, and then move on the software. And there is, as I said, a free software available. It's very, very critical that you do it by hand first, and you can analyze yourself. Just write something, write a letter, or write a diary with your hand, and next time write it on a computer. Just feel what's the difference. The impact of technology has been documented and the plenty of things we do differently because we're influenced by a certain technology we use. For example, if you're using a page, if you're using a paper, if you're generating ideas about something, when you reach the end of that page, you tend to stop thinking because you reach the end of the page. It doesn't make sense, right? Because the page should dictate, you should dictate what the page is doing for you rather than the other way around. But technology influences us in subtle and non-subtle ways. So it's best to do hand-drawn mind maps first before using the software. Okay. So do you think using mind maps, it's just like this, you know, somebody told me that if you had a Nokia and you move to Android, then you move to Apple, do actually your, does your brain get rewired? Because you're thinking different things. So does mind mapping rewire your brain yes, to be it does. more creative? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, there are plenty of parts of the brain which are not used with normal linear nodes if any are used at all, because normal linear nodes are extremely boring. Ask, how many of you are parents in this room? Okay, so, so you can ask your children whether they like color versus black and white. Almost everybody will say color. Ask them if they like pictures versus words. Almost everybody will say pictures. And what do the textbooks have? Virtually no color. Low quality pictures or black and white pictures and small pictures. And that's why plenty of students have a learning problem. It's, it's everywhere, it's not just students, it's adults as well. Well, adults take drugs, alcohol, and tobacco to beat that frustration. And kids take medicines like Ritalin because they're diagnosed with imaginary diseases like ADD, ADHD, attention deficit disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, dyslexia. So it just doesn't make sense. You just have to give them stuff which their brain loves and which has been proven to be the best way to get information inside the brains and outside the brains. So can you give me any student which has succeeded with this example which you're telling me? Yes, uh, there are plenty of students. Uh, I have over 500 testimonials on my website and 500 testimonials on my YouTube channel. Plug, Thank you plug. for the opportunity. Uh, you can actually see a student of mine who has been an alumnus of the Harvard Business School He's made a mind map in a sales meeting and he's posted that mind map on my Facebook wall. So I've not done any editing or photoshopping or anything. Where he himself has stated that this one mind map in one sales meeting, which was used for brainstorming, led to an increase in the bottom line by over 20 crores. Sales or bottom line? Bottom line. Bottom line. Bottom line in one meeting, 20 crores. You keep saying Tony Buzan, Tony Buzan, I want this international award. After who is Tony Buzan? Tony Buzan is the inventor of mind maps. Okay. He's also uh, nominated for Nobel Peace Prize because of his contribution to education. Oh. So he's one of the world's leading authority, not only on mind mapping, but also on speed reading, creativity, uh, and a host of other things. Mm -hmm. So is he, an, is, he a, is he an American? Is he a British? Or uh, what he's, is he? he's from the UK. Okay. Yeah, and he's written over 125 books. I would strongly recommend that you, you read his books, read books on creativity, read books on the brain, because the most important thing in this world is your brain. If you were to ask this question to plenty of people, what's the most important thing? Some people will say relationships are the most important thing. Some people will say money is the most important thing. Well, you can't do much there if you're not gonna take control of your brain. And we're reading stuff in newspapers right now, which just, seems so absurd and there's a lady who finished her workout in the gym she had her headphones on and she was crossing the road because she had her headphones on she didn't see a bus coming and the bus hit her and she died i mean even the basics of taking care of your brain are not being followed so i, I think that's the most important thing everything else comes after that you've been uh, doing this training expose yeah. Of course, I've been a part of the training expos and uh, you, I see you're going to Pune and to Delhi. So what, are this, what is the concept of this training expos? I mean, who does it benefit? The trainers, you, the people coming there, I mean, who's to benefit over there? 
See, any good proposal has to benefit everybody. Okay. So it benefits everybody. Okay. It is, in my view, the world's first and only reality show for trainers. And it's a real reality show. It's not a reality show where you get SMSs and you ask votes and all that. It's like an audition. You get three to four trainers in a room who speak for one hour. If you like them, you pay for the seminars there and then. Achha. So you're, you're not voting with SMSs, you're voting with your money. And that's, that's as real as it gets. So right now, I'm sure all of you must be getting at least five events on your Facebook page every day. Now, how do you know which event to go to? How do you know how good the trainer is? How do you know how good Sam is? So, so if you come and see Sam talk about networking or talk about social media and whatever other businesses he's in, if you see him in action for one hour, the likelihood is much, much higher that you'll immediately take a decision to go in for the services. You'll open your, up your checkbooks right there and then. He's happy, you're happy because you don't have a time to go to 100 other people and try to understand how good their services are based on their website, based on their YouTube videos. Here you're getting to see him live in action for one hour. So it just uh, makes your decision making very, very efficient. So the guy gives a full training over there or he gives a part of the training what he's going to impart over there? So it's, uh, it cannot be a sales spiel only. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, if, if you're given one hour, then you've got to have some learning which has to be imparted to the audience. So if you normally talk about, let's say, seven to eight concepts in a day or three to four concepts in a day uh, as a trainer, then yeah, you, you should talk in depth of at least, about at least one concept in that one hour. Okay. So tell me something about social media. Like you are, we both compete with each other. We were competing for some time for maximum number of friends. While I have a different view on it, what's your take on a lot of connections, a lot of uh, Facebook friends, a lot of, what's your take on that? I mean, is too much too much or how much is too much? Nothing is too much. Okay. Uh, as I said, no matter how many connections I have, I'm a very simple person, so I want only one thing, and that is more. That's it. Now, I, I think uh, it's because I come from a sales background. I, I used to sell ceasefire fire extinguishers. I, I used to pack four fire extinguishers in a bag and just take my bike, go to a place, park my bike, and just knock doors, something like 30, 40 doors every day, and say, okay, hey, I'm from ceasefire, and you don't have a fire extinguisher, so I'm here to save you. Buy this fire extinguisher from me. So that was extremely exhausting, and it was terrible, terrible, terribly hard work. Now, the thing is, if I go to you, and I tell you, okay, I got this fire extinguisher, you may decide to buy it later on, but mm -hmm. how will you think of me later on? Mm -hmm. uh, social media did not, did not exist, email did not exist. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I was extremely frustrated, and it was a lot of, lot of hard work. Uh, so the minute social media came in, I said, this is it. This is my childhood dream come true. Uh, this way, I can speak to you about a concept. If you don't buy the concept right now, it's perfectly fine because I can then keep on talking about that concept in different ways and interesting ways on social media. So whenever you do think of that concept, there's a very good likelihood that you'll think of me hmm. rather than anyone else who's okay. not been in touch. Okay. So I, I think it's all coming from deprivation. If, if people are deprived, then they really understand the value of what's available right now. So all the parents in the room, deprive your kids. Deprive your kids? Yes. Of what? Of plenty of things because they don't value it anymore. Yeah. Don't give them too much money. We'll don't lose. give them too many iPads. Don't give them too much uh, time on social media. How will they value anything if they don't know deprivation, if they don't know scarcity? Yeah, we'll be out of the house, you know. <laughs> Which is a serious thing. <laughs> I can vouch for that because kids don't listen to you nowadays. Okay, find a way. Uh, so th that is the next question which will come to over there. So you are okay having you know 24,000 LinkedIn connections and all that stuff and all. You're I'm, I'm not okay. I'm insecure. I want more. One more. Okay. <laughs> we'll and, and, and and it's really tough to get more connections. I thought the minute I reach 3,000 or 4,000 connections, it'll be very easy for me to get more connections because everybody will see that I got three or 4,000 connections and they'll say, okay, this guy's a big network. Let me connect to him. It didn't. It doesn't happen. Life is getting tougher and tougher. Social media is getting tougher and tougher. Training is getting tougher and tougher. Those trainers in the room. Every day, there's more competition. So maybe it was easier to get connections first because, uh, because maybe you were receiving few requests to connect. Mm -hmm. Now maybe you received 30, 40 requests to connect and maybe it's still going and directly going to spam. So it's getting tougher and tougher.
the competition on social media is getting very tough to increase the number of connections is very very tough it's not going to just happen on autopilot if you don't have a strategy it's not going to happen okay so you spoke about uh, rebooting your life in 2009 yes so tell me something what happened what are the what are the things you rebooted yes you formatted and rebooted or you just rebooted uh, I, I thought both are synonymous. No, so. Both are different. Reboot okay. is when your computer hangs and you press the reset button. And uh, formatting is you sometimes back up or you don't back up your data. Okay. Okay. And then you format and put a new operating system. So which one did you do among that? I, I thought a voluntary reboot was possible. So I, I would say a, a voluntary reboot. Okay. I, I've been thinking of the concepts of peak performance and happiness since childhood. And one of the things that you got to do to become successful like somebody else or become happy as somebody else is to look at what are the beliefs that that successful person has and you got to adopt his beliefs okay now it's got to make sense to you you can't blindly adopt that person's beliefs um, so i've seen plenty of trainers blindly imitating some other trainer as, as i was saying i was into uh, researching how does one perform better, how does one become more successful, how does one become richer, happier, healthier. Since childhood, that's been a passion for me. And I discovered that there were three beliefs that were holding me back. One was the belief in God. I, I believed in God for plenty of years, plenty of decades of my life. And then I, I just read lots of stuff and saw interviews of plenty of successful people. And I said, okay, now I, I, got, I got to take a stand now. I got to decide, do I want to continue this belief or not? And I, I decided to drop it. And I'm very, very happy after that. I, I think if you're going to believe in some external force that's going to be responsible for your happiness and your success and your wealth, then consciously or subconsciously, you're not going to put in as much effort as you would put in into anything. Okay, I, I, think, I think that's really worked for me and I see no reason why that should not work for anybody else. So if you believe in God, think again and I'm very serious about this because my Facebook status says atheist and by the way so does Mark Zuckerberg a research states that the higher your IQ the greater the chance that you don't believe in God there's a correlation between IQ and uh, being an atheist so before I get stoned let me move on to the next one <laughs> the, uh, the next one is I gave up the concept of working for someone else I just dumped that. So there was a big tiger in me and I was caged and I got rid of that cage finally. I'm, I'm very, very happy. So in fact, I have a program called Secrets to Being a Super Successful Trainer, which encourages people to leave their jobs and become trainers. It can be generalized to just about any profession. So anybody can come there and get a strategy for leaving his job. So in fact, I put a Facebook post, one of the best ways to achieve happiness is to take out your mobile phone and type in I quit and send it to your boss. So that's the second one. And the third one, uh, if, if I don't get hit with tomatoes and onions, I'll be surprised, is, is marriage. So I, I believe in marriage. All I, the men really are laughing. Did. All the men are laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe in the concept of marriage and I, I don't believe it, in it anymore. That's the third concept that I gave up. And I don't want to speak too much about it. Yeah. Because, 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 because I want to make money out of it. So I, don't want to, so I don't want to give anything away for free. I intend to write a book and intend, intend to do a seminar. It's going to be called, if you're single, why you should remain single. And if you're married, why you should get divorced immediately. <laughs> okay, now let me clarify here. Divorce does not mean separation. Divorce is a legal term. Okay, let me just clarify that. So that's sleeping so, on separate yeah, bed, I, I, you mean, Aisa, kuch? Sleep on separate no, beds se or something? Separation like? is when you're physically living apart. Okay, so this you can physically live together? You can physically live okay, together, yes. Yeah. Then I'll attend your seminar. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so there's lots more to it, which I don't want to elaborate right now. Okay, so, so your plug is done for that also. So good, so you're writing a book? I, I'm planning to write a book, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Okay. And uh, so how much do you earn by leaving your job? And your wife and God and all. So <coughs> how much has it gone up? Like if you're earning, say, one lakh rupees before all that, and after that, did it become one extra zero? You went down by one zero. <laughs> my, my sex life is pretty good. How's yours? So he doesn't want to answer that. <laughs> 
Uh, so Dharmendra, tell us something about uh, the you, Dharmendra. Put all that side over there. Where were you born and how did you start your career? Okay, I was born and fed up in Pune. <coughs> born and fed up in Pune. Yes. Okay. Anil, hearing that, no? Yeah. It's full of lazy people. In fact, I made a joke about Pune. If you go to a person who's, a, who's obviously there are smart people in Pune, but average, average. You go to an average guy from Pune and you give him a bag, a Jamit Sam bag, this one, filled with 10 kgs of gold, and you tell him, I'm giving this to you for free. Okay, here are legal documents to prove that you're getting it for free. Take it. What is he going to say? Police ko phone karo aisa. No, everything is legal. Achha. Okay, he, he is convinced that it's legal. Okay. And he's generally getting it for free. What's he going to say? You, 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 you are saying, okay, this no, is you, it. You sit, sit, and, sit, and you're sit, putting sit. the bag here. Photo nahi and you're saying, okay, this is yours. Take it. He is convinced that it is, uh, it, that, that it's absolutely legitimate. And there is real gold inside and all that. All that part is taken care of. What is going to be his response? Sorry? <laughs> He's not from Pune. He's from Dubai. <laughs> yes, who said that? How do you know? <laughs> okay, so his answer is mostly going to be, uh, can you deliver it to my house? <laughs> so I, I want to be surrounded by hungry people. Uh, that's the reason I moved to, to Mumbai 10 years ago. And now I'm frustrated because I don't find Mumbai guys hungry enough. But... But Pune guys have become hungry. Pune guys, yeah, they may have become slightly hungrier, but Mumbai is the only city in India which where you meet a lot of hungry people. So it's very satisfying. It's very satisfying to be around hungry Hungry people. for work, you mean? Hungry for work, okay. hungry for uh, fame, hungry for money, hungry for making a mark, passionate about doing what they want to do. So even if you're not getting anything, but you're just passionate, well, you, you do it because it satisfies you. Okay. So the number of those kind of people in Mumbai is very, very high. That's why it's a very, very satisfying uh, place to live in mentally. Otherwise, obviously, it's very expensive and very stressful. It's, it's the most stressful city in the world, probably. How many jobs did you do before uh, coming to this career change of yours? Uh, about six. Okay. So any, anything notable in that? Which would, accepting the ceasefire going and, you know? Uh, the last company I joined was a fantastic company called Benchmark Mutual Fund, uh, which was into mutual fund products which were totally new which were either first in the country or first in the world. And they were totally based either on indexing, where funds were invested in a certain index, like the BSE index or Nifty index. There's no active fund manager. Now those funds tend to do much better than active fund managers or active, actively managed funds. But most of the people in the public don't know that. So you invest in an, in an index fund, the chances are very high that that index fund will beat an actively managed fund with lower costs. So that was, that was a fantastic company. It also had lots of other products which were about quantitative investing, where there was no human hand involved in investing. And that company ultimately got acquired by Goldman Sachs. So I'm, I'm very proud to be associated with that company. It, it was like the apple of the mutual fund industry in India. So was that the company where you said I quit? That was the last company because okay. I, I worked there for seven years as head of sales. So then you decided to give it a... Then, then I said, yeah, that's, that's it. I've, I've, I've been working 15 years and... Uh, it's it's about self-image. I think if you think, on one hand, if you think you're smart, the other hand, you should ask yourself, why are you work with someone else then? It, it doesn't make sense. So there is going to be a conflict. So if you really think you're smart, then you are going to have that conflict as to why am I working for someone else if I'm smart? And that conflict came up in a big way after 15 years. So I'm a really slow guy. But, uh, you know, just a twist on that particular thing. About 15 years, 10, 10, 15 years back, it was very good to be an entrepreneur. But nowadays, it's become very, very tough. You know, the regulations, the competition and all. I see so many of the young generation of the kids, they say, no, we don't want to join our father's business. I'll get a job in a finance company. I'll get this. I get vacations when I want. I can do what I want. I want to quit my job tomorrow. Previously, you could work for 10 years in a company. I think there's an article today, you know, uh, I've been working for 10 years in this company. and all. Now, working 10 years means you're not competitive. You, nobody else wants you over there. You should be working maximum two years or one and a half year in a company, jump to the next, jump to the next. 
I see entrepreneurship is not being fostered enough in India. What's your take on that? It's definitely not been fostered enough. At the same time, it is something that everybody should take very, very seriously because jobs are going to vanish. Uh, and not, we're not even talking about the future, we're talking about the present. So if somebody were to really do a PhD on the impact of Google Glass and Google driverless cars, I think the statistics would be very, very scary. Hmm. Plenty of industries will vanish, plenty of jobs will vanish. And, and I'm, I'm going to give you a chilling example. And, and I, I think Sam will love that example because he knows that company very well. Facebook recently acquired a company. Do you know which company that is? It starts with I. Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Do you know how much they paid for it? One billion dollars. One billion dollars. It's about 6,000 crores. Now, if you know the answer, please don't tell us the answer. But if you don't know the answer, just take a guess. How many employees did Instagram have? Just shoot out a guess. 6,000 crores was the valuation. It had 13 employees. One, three. So if anybody thinks, I'm going to be in the job market because I'm smart, well, plenty of smart people would apply to Instagram. Only 13 people got in. So the number of jobs is reducing, even at the high level. So if somebody thinks, okay, Google Glass, yeah, Google Glass could take away high level jobs, but let's say uh, uh, driverless cars will only affect the low segment and technology will only affect the low segment. Well, that's not true. Uh, there's plenty of things that technology is doing right now, which plenty of people thought it would never be able to do. And in 2029, according to Ray Kurzweil, who's a futurist, who is consulted by Bill Gates regularly, and if Bill Gates consults him, he has to be good, right? According to him, in 2029, computers will have consciousness. That means they will be able to respond to you verbally without you knowing that it's a computer. So you could, you could be talking to somebody on the phone, and you could be getting responses for your queries, and you think you're talking to a human being, and that thing on the other side is actually a computer. That's how developed technology is going to be, not very far away, 2029. So just imagine, the entire BPO industry in India could just vanish overnight. Millions of people on the roads. So it's a very, very serious thing, and none of the governments are prepared. So everybody just has to think for his own. Fantastic, Dhanmand. I think you are very entertaining and a lot of plugs and a lot of stuff. And I really vouch for him. I've gone for a couple of his workshops and all. They are really good. You should attend them. I think you're having one uh, mind map training now. Yes, I, I, I'm it not good at marketing myself. I don't like to market myself. Yeah, but I, I have a mind map <laughs> seminar <laughs> tomorrow at Thane. It's an open workshop. Anybody can attend. And one on uh, 1st February. And my partner is in the room. Menosh. Yeah, there he is. So, uh, if, if you want to attend the first February one in Santa Cruz, uh, he's here. Then there is a speed reading seminar on 5th Feb, then there is a... <laughs> so then you can network that. Dharminder, thank you so much for being here. It's and an honor. On behalf of Indian Networker and Jambit Sam, that's a bhaji bag. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not going to drop it home. So, <coughs> sorry. And uh, so you can, you have coffee, no? I hope. Um, you have water at least, no? Yeah, water, yeah, okay, yes. <laughs> You've got to ask him everything, you know. He'll say, I don't have tea, coffee. That's the jam with Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. It's great having you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's my pleasure.